I started studying conducting at 21, got my first job at 22, and then I got the BSO at 23. Uh, so I think as a professional conductor, I would say about 16, 17 years now. And so it's been quite a journey, to be honest. She was looking for a way to sort of combine music and karate, and I'm just thinking, absolutely nutcase, how would this work? And so, you know, I came home, I'm thinking, and I'm like, you know, things that are done now, you know, could be like a food show, could be done, you know, normally competition, but then to do something so out of the ordinary, I think this would really get people going, huh, what the hell? But see some resemblance there, you know? Not only did I get re-inspired about karate, but, you know, you see a lot of relationship, you know, uh, between conducting and to, to, uh, to, you know, really defend yourself with karate and music, breathing, you know, movements, you know. So it was an interesting trip. And uh, for me, I, I have to say, this uh, wacko idea came out to be a sort of disguise and blessing because it was, you know, meeting a great, uh, young, talented karate master who was so humble and yet so fun and so um, so full of life, you know? And to see how it is for generation down that you see this karate being packed down that, wow, you know, it's such a admirable tradition. We gotta walk about five minutes to the right place and uh, apparently there's three buildings of the same name. And so right now we're just walking straight down to uh, the same building, but uh, they have three different branches right now. So follow me. My first impression of Yagi-san was actually, oh boy, I have to work with this guy. He was so Japanese, and I think it's just that, you know, a Japanese, you, they try to put on this image of, you know, righteousness, you know, everything is so proper, and and so, you know, I, I never forget, because my sister and my godson were up to it, and we decided to go down for a walk. And actually, Yagi-san has showed up to the hotel lobby about maybe an hour before the meeting. And I would never forget how he was sitting. He was just sitting by himself in the lobby, literally, like, you know, like a samurai, you know? And he's like, I was like, oh boy, I thought this is Yagi-san, you know? I go, I hope this is not the guy. But um, in reality, this guy was just, uh, you know, he, he that, that day I remember lunch, he was so proper. Every response he had had to be so correct, politically correct, and nothing. And, you know, I am so free and Canadian, you know, so I just spoke whatever's on my mind. And I, I felt that, you know, it's important for me to really make him a little bit looser. You know, I don't know if that's correct, but. Um, just to, to get him to be more comfortable. Just really started to uh, open up. And I think that, that made me feel like, okay, we got it, we clicked. And I was so glad finally he started to be open. He can joke around. Um, 
But yet, I, I still feel he, on TV he was very proper, very humble. Everything was very intelligently said, you know. It wasn't like me, just, you know, just blurt out whatever. But Yagi san was, to be honest, I couldn't have asked for a better partner uh, on, on the show. This is a thing because when I was growing up in Japan as a student for a conductor, as a conductor, I always remembered that, you know, from very far away from my school, you could see Mount Fuji. But very, very, like, very small. And, you know, I, I um, my teacher and I and some of my friends would, you know, they would always kind of give a little prayer to it. and. The saying is that when you see Mount Fuji and you, you make a wish, it, the wish will come true. And so it was, uh, you know, I think many of the Japanese will say that Mount Fuji has a, you know, it's one of the biggest um, how do you say, icons of Japan. I mean, how can you not know what Mount Fuji is? And I think if you ever go on the Shinkansen, and it's really uh, quite spectacular to when you're going through the Shizuoka, you know, this area, and to see Mount Fuji, you you will notice maybe not just one or two. You'll notice probably a good chunk of people are looking there and they're just kind of making a little wish to uh, Mount Fuji. So for me, it was very special, you know, that I had such a great view there. What did you wish for? <laughs> That's between me and Mount Fuji. <laughs> I'll tell you what it is. I I I'm just joking around. Um, I I wish for the production to be a success, and I too I wish for um, that everyone who was together on the trip would be in good health. No one gets sick, you know, and that we all have a great time, you know but mainly health, because if we have health, we of course, we'll all have, always have a good time, regardless. I try to always relax myself, but when I'm trying to do something that's, um, you know, with conviction, whether it is uh, music or whether it's karate or something to be shown, uh, especially something like the documentary too, you know, you want to be very thoughtful about it too. And so, you know, people say, yes, you know, you have two sides when you see you conducting you're a total different person because you just like that energy and that oh, you look like you're just like totally into it and you know that's the thing and I want to be totally into this um, how do you say this karate even just a simple kata and I think we did a, an episode with uh, Chef Michel Jacob about the cooking it's exactly the same thing when you see Chef Michel at his, you know, his, he's in his own world. He is so into it. Every slice, every movement he has, you know, he's just so into it. And you know, he he's, he's very. How, how are you? And then he just goes right back into work. And and I think it's the same thing for all of us. And so, you know, we're. And I think it's good that we can be able to release and be ourselves outside of this, you know, this little bubble because. I think if we're all in this little bubble being so intense and so, you know, high, I don't think we're going to be able to live life, to be honest. This is natural, right? The way you hear to hear, what just comes in, ah, no, 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 no. this side. <laughs> Better as much as you can. Love inhale and then love exhale. It's 
speaking about this, I think one of the great things I never forget is, yeah, you must be so within your your little world, but you, you know, to do it at a hundred or hundred twenty percent even, but be consistent about it. You know, uh, you know. I, I think today the problem is many people think they can just get by or coast, and you know, the world is not like that right now. You know, I mean, you need to really put in the work a hundred and hundred twenty percent. There's no, there's no um, coasting in life, and so that's why I think that word consistency so much to me, especially that 100%, every day you get in there, or whenever you're in there, you give it 100%, you don't even back out one drop, one drop, people will dump you. Here is uh, Mebukan, which is a total different um, uh, sort of how do you say a cult, a different house, and I had did uh, you know a different um, style of karate. But of course, any martial arts, you know, there's some kind of resemblance uh, in, especially with the spirit. So for me to kind of get back into it was really um, uh, it was challenging because I haven't done it since I was 11, you know, and so for me, you know trying to get back but you know it's a little bit like riding the bike you know that you you sort of have it you can balance it you can kind of pull off certain things but um with uh with yagi san you know he was so uh gracious one night i remember it was in taketomi um in hoshinoya the uh the resort and he came in and and you know he and i did my kata for him and he was like Mm. <laughs> mm. And you know, when Japanese does, mm, you know, it means that it's, you know, it's not good, you know, so it's not good. So, anyways, I can't say that on TV, right? But it, it, it wasn't good, let's put it that way. So, um, so I, I really thought, oh man, what should I do? And but he was so gracious because I think he's been training uh, young people of all levels, from white belt to you know, black belt, and for me, I was, um, you know, brown belt at 11 years old, but then finally I quit. And so, you know, I, I felt I should have been wearing a white belt, to be honest, just out of respect because I'm going back down to the beginners, but uh, he was very great. He said, wear your black, you know, brown belt because you really earned it back then. You should stay there, you know, but anyways, I got to say, you know, we went back to the basics and the basic moves, you know, some of it, it's, you know, it's reminder. And I think when you do karate, especially kata or something, every point that the master tells you, it's just a reminder of what to do, you know. And it's very similar to conducting because when we're pointing out problems or maybe little things that are there, but we're also giving it as a reminder to the orchestra. So, you know, it's teaching, yeah. I think teaching the concept is that, you know, when you do a kata, you play the piece, you say something about it, then you want to give sort of a reminder so that they know, so in future, when they get to this point, or where in the point in the music, that they begin to really realize, ah, this is um, how it should be. Every, not the rolls, but the, uh, every time you have those, just one stroke, can we use just a little bit harder melody? Well, you know, it was interesting because, you know, to see, to be there with a group of people from Canada mostly, I think, they were all karate in the, you know, karate masters in their own, uh, own rights, you know, and, but it's just quite amazing to see how there's so many different styles and even within the styles, you see the personality of the person coming out. And, you know, the personality of, you know, uh, people coming out, it's quite hilarious because it goes through with this, the, the same thing with an orchestra. You know, you, you, you're telling the oboe to, to play less and don't be so loud and don't, uh, you know, play this a little bit more correctly. or the, and, and you begin to see who, who's flexible, who's really willing to learn and really to who really had it, um, 
you know, who really had it or who really had to show the egos, you know. And, and you know, Yagi was, you know, I did an interview with Yagi after the beach. And, and, you know, he was so polite. He was like, oh, everybody was doing so great. Everybody was trying so hard, you know. And I said, you know, you can't talk like this, Yagi son, because this is, this is you know, we got to be honest. And I said, you know, as a conductor, you can praise everybody. You can say, oh, you're playing so well, you're playing so good, beautiful, you're playing so loud. You know, yes, you can praise them, but you have to also give them some, you know, value, valuable feedback. And so I, I felt that, you know, that, that time, I think that's when Yagi started to be nervous about how to communicate his real thoughts. Uh, but he did say, you know, oh yeah, you know, some of those people were just trying to like, sh you know, show off the, you know, they got they got an ego the size of, you know, God knows what, you know, and and it's um, for me, it's, it was an eye opener too because I deal with the exact same thing in in music and. You know, you, you have these guys who are probably playing in the orchestra for 35, 40 years. Finally, you know, they can't play as well. So what do they do? They boost up their egos and they, they you know, they try to show it off even more. And and I hate to say, it, I, I saw some of that in the, in the on the beach. And, uh, you know, no offense to all those guys. I found, I found everyone to be likable. But, you know, the thing is that, um, you know, you can, it's, it's just a personality thing that comes out and, and, you know, forgive me for saying this, but I think people should, you know, really be very mindful, uh, especially when you're dealing with somebody like Yaji san who really achieved so much at 40 plus years old and, you know, to be one of the top eight degree black belt at that age, I mean, come on, you know, you've got to be really uh, able to to listen in to somebody younger than you. You know, it's so refreshing for mm -hmm. me because when I was a student of conducting mm -hmm. in Japan, mm -hmm. we also same thing. We are very square. We conduct like very very so clear, nice. and have to be always inside. And now you know everybody do many different styles, mm -hmm. different ways, and they think of many different personalities. Mm -hmm. And so I want Sensei's uh, opinion. Everybody's uh, style and what, how do you feel about the, the style today? So uh, everybody doing basic yeah. is their perfect because they are training a lot. A long time. So, uh, but uh, I think Okinawa traditional karate not so much fancy. <laughs> then it's most original. Original, more simple. More simple, yes, yeah. Small movement. Yeah. Breathing control. Breathing control. Yeah, exactly. yeah. You know, that's the thing, you know, I think in what you did for us today is a very good reminder that simple, simple. is easier. Yes. And simple mm. is always the great respect to the tradition. Yes. You know, this is a great uh, thing we're talking about. Mm. See, the thing is that I've dealt with this very, um, very early in my life. Mm. Uh, what the difference between Yagi and I is that Yagi was dealing mostly with Japanese people. Japanese people are brought up with uh, etiquette, respect, and you know you really must respect the master no matter what you say. However, I was I was coming from a different side. I was dealing with people who probably knew more than me. But the thing is that you have to take it as a cr constructive criticism when they say something to you. You can either take it or you can just trash it. That I learned very early in my life, so I was really able to play around with that. So this is a very famous Okinawan karate master. Ah. They say something like karate words. This, uh, this kind of teacher, this <laughs> say this one, this style, this say. Like a goju ryu, shorin ryu, shotokan. Oh, this is very interesting. No, that hands are beat by the sword. So, 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 so. Wow, this is incredible. So, in karate, never attack first. Yes, 
for this. We always have a misconception mm -hmm. that karate is about attacking. Yes. But it's always about defense. Mm -hmm. yeah. Self-defense. A true master of karate never used the technique. Mastered through many years of training. Mm -hmm. Wow. So it's almost like a bunker center. It's like a cultural so, 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 center. Bunker center right? For everybody, though. Know? Yes. For the, everybody in Okinawa. Yes. Wow, this is incredible. And many people come in from the many, world to yes. see. And then you say the competition mm -hmm. and everything here. Yeah. Everybody can use there, yeah. like a training also, oh, training by yourself. Uh, oh, by yourself. So, 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 so. They have a dojo, uh, small yeah. dojo, uh. the big dojo. They can use a seminar, kind of the big seminar, also mm -hmm. like kind of the tournament. Yes. So, so it becomes an institution, it becomes a cultural karate uh, sort of a home for yes. everybody. So, so home for everybody. Kind of the, wow. First place of karate is the Okinawa. Yeah. Then Okinawa government make uh, like a, this such a beautiful uh, karate kaikan. Kaikan is whole like karate whole, right? Yeah, it's great. I mean, it is fantastic. You know. It's a careful balance, and I think uh, for me, I think uh, with Yagi san, I think you know, sometimes there, there's the pros and cons in both, I think, you know. But I think one of the things is that when to put your ego away is it's not as easy when you get older because you know, the older I think if you can tell from the karate uh, experience, you can see the, especially the older ones are the ones who really. Um, you know, very protective of their, their themselves. They really, uh, they really want to be shown. They really want to, and you know, I gotta say, don't forget, those are the guys who are, you know, who are much older. They, you know, they're more stubborn. This is a like a history, history. And like a wow. weapon, everything inside, like a history technique. Uh, karate, uh, also kobudo, a weapon. A weapon? Yes. Wow. And when we get older, and that's the thing about conductors, I know when I'm getting older, I'm going to become more rigid about what I want. Because when you get older, you want to, you know what you want. So I have brought some small present for, 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 for Sensei. Uh, this is a book that was made in 2010. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit out outdated now. But I hope that, that you will you will find at least interesting read. Thank you so much. Yes. You. you know, this is uh, this is really. I, I think that when you get older, you become very peculiar about your taste and what you want.